The people of Nepal are some of the most kind and generous I've ever met. They have such strong values around family. From what I've seen, who you have is far more important than what you have. Despite the personal and financial problems people are facing as a result of the earthquake and indeed the fuel crisis, they're so giving. Our next trip is a 12-hour drive west through the mountains. We're on our way to the Sri Jana Secondary School for the Deaf in Pokhara. It was the first school built by Preston charity Deathway in 2000. This is the only deaf school in Nepal offering a complete education from nursery level right through to the equivalent of A-levels. 250 deaf children are learning here. 150 of which sleep in the hostels on site. This is one of the few schools in Nepal where staff salaries are paid by the Nepalese government, but Deafway is still funding projects here. Today, chief executive of the charity, David Hines, has the difficult task of telling the school there's not enough money to repair earthquake damage here. It's by no means as badly affected as the school in Sinduli, but it's hard news to deliver. It's clear there are still some problems to fix here. The hostels are overcrowded and in need of extension. But the school idolised Deaf Way for their continued support and interpreter Tanka Baral is hopeful for more funds in the future. For the development uh, of this school, Deaf Way comes first because Deaf Way initiated this project as a school and afterwards you know, government of Nepal also started to help, help, help us. Tanka takes us on a tour of the grounds. He explains how the fuel crisis in Nepal is even affecting education. We have got a great shortage of petroleum products and our students also are from you know remote part of Nepal and because of the blockade and fuel crisis people are forced to use timber as, as, as the fuel. That's why students fear that if they come to city, uh, they cannot manage because of this fear. Many students have not come back to the school. You know, there are so many students who have not come back to the school. You know, we don't know what will happen, how long it will continue. I couldn't help but feel quite sad when leaving this school. In 15 years, they've come a long way to offer this sort of education for deaf children, preparing them to go on to university. It's something that would never have been an option for these students before. The deaf people I've met here don't take education for granted, but problems beyond their control are blocking their progress.